Hi, I'm Gaetan. I'm uh, born in August 87. And today I'm not gonna do a cooking show, but I'm gonna talk about something very delicate. Um, I grew up with an illness or sickness uh, already two, 32 years. And today I'm gonna talk about it and I hope I can find some uh, more people who have the same problem as me. I know a couple of people, but it's always nice to have more people uh, with the same illness. So today the first uh, heat started in Brussels. So we get like more than 31, 32 degrees. And for me, it's really not nice. So actually I have um, an illness, in a inability to sweat or an hydrosis ectodermal dysplasia. What the fuck is that? Well, yeah, so I can't sweat, I cannot sweat. Some people will say, oh nice, you don't sweat, you don't stink and everything. But no, it's really not fun. Um, it's a sickness uh, who cause seven on uh, 10,000 people uh, in the world. It's not very common. There are kind of different uh, ectodermal dysplasia. There's over 170. Everybody has a little bit of different case. Uh, luckily for me, it's not a hard, hard case. Some people uh, has like really pointy teeth or no teeth, uh, thin hair or baldness. Uh, for me, that's okay. I went to the hairdresser actually, finally. So anhydrosis is a malfunction of uh, skin, hair, nails and teeth. And the problem about this, uh, there is no cure for it. So I have to live with it. I've been born with this. Um, nobody of the family has it or yeah, we, don't, we are not sure. So yeah, I'm actually one of the first and actually my uh, friend and family circle, I'm the only one who has it. So how do I know actually I have uh, the ectodermal dysplasia or, or anhydrosis? Um, when, when I was a kid, um, I had a couple of nights fever during summer. Uh, my parents put me in cold bath, uh, everything was okay, but uh, they were still uh, yeah, a bit scared uh, why I have the, um, those symptoms of uh, heat. And uh, my grandmother always said, oh, your, your little kid doesn't sweat, it never stings. Uh, so yeah. Uh, question marks and uh, so one day when I was uh, really young around six or seven years old and I always was uh, playing in the kindergarten uh, in the shadow um, yeah I was I was a bit different I was uh, the the different duck of the, the troop let's say like that so when it was warm I, I had to struggle with fevers of 38 39 and I had it once 40 degrees um, yeah it's not fun so my first sweat test, um, where they actually went with all those problems uh, to the hospital in Bruges and um, there was a professor, they, he said, yeah, he maybe has the anhydrosis ectodermal dysplasia. So um, what they did is actually put a compress on my arm and uh, sealed it for 24 hours. And after 24 hours, I had to go back to the hospital and they measure how much moisture or sweat. It was in the compress and it was nihil. It was um, really, really low, uh, not enough. And then they said, yeah, okay, he cannot sweat. So um, normally with my puberty, it will go be better. So when I was 18, uh, I went to the hospital for a week and uh, we started to make some tests. Um, yeah, those tests uh, was a little bit of everything. It was a sweat test. Um, it was to see with a um, the kind of product, uh, they put it where you mostly sweat, like on the forehead, armpits, uh, feet, foot, and um, they put a powder on it and with the black dots and they can count how much uh, pores, sweat pores I have. And it was really low, maybe I have uh, like seven here. Uh, same for my foot and my armpits, uh, not more than 10 um, sweat pores. As well, I did a bicycle test. Uh, I did my uh, long radio, hard radios, uh, I did a nerve system test, uh, which uh, didn't work because my nerves, yeah, they don't want to work with it. And as well, I did a cardio test. They measured for 24 hours my uh, heart rate. Uh, I had to walk around in summer with like 
uh, seven dots on my back and my um, uh, my chest, uh, like with a Walkman. So uh, really not fun times. So I had to do it twice. Um, but yeah, since that day, we still don't know where does it come from. Does it come from the nerves? Does it come from the skin? Yeah, I still don't know, and we don't still don't know. How did I grow up with this? Well, actually, my family, my sister. Um, they took care of me a lot uh, when I was a kid, so no hot holidays. Also, I always went to Brit Brittany, French Brittany, uh, Bretagne, uh, to eat nice oysters. And uh, there is a little bit cooler, but it's not going to be South France or Spain or Portugal or yeah, even further, Turkey, whatever, Mor Morocco. Uh, so I've never been to, to this country and I think I'm never going to do it. Maybe, maybe in, in, in the winter, but yeah. So it was always a struggle uh, for yeah, holidays, but as well school and hobbies, because I used to sport a lot when I was a kid. So when I was a kid, I played tennis, I played football, I've been sailing a little bit, uh, wall climbing, uh, which I love. Uh, yeah, I did a lot of sports, but uh, when I was yeah, around 12, 13, 14 years old, I stopped all of it. I do start skateboarding uh, when I was 14, uh, which was better for me because I could skate for 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then, re then rest for 10, one hour or half an hour, whatever. So it was actually a nice sport for me. So the problem was after intense sporting, uh, I could sport for one hour, no problem was when I was young, but then I was uh, feeling really bad. Um, I had to cool down, take showers, take uh, ice cubes on me, or, or yeah. But yeah, it was not. The, the sport was fun, but afterwards it was always hell. As well, yeah, so when I was 14, I started to go to festivals, concerts, and everything. But you can imagine summer, festivals, a lot of people, heat, not a lot of shadow. It was not very pleasant. Luckily, I had my friends who, who took care of me a lot. Thank you very much. Um, they they, they stayed with me in the shadow. Uh, they went for drinks for me, or they, they took my backpack. Uh, uh, yeah, so much. Uh, even my mom used to drive one hour to to bring me ice cold water uh, because festivals are very expensive to uh, to drink. Um, so yeah, it's really not easy to live with it. Even a little anecdote. I went to Grass Pop Festival, it's a metal festival, my second year when I went. And it was so warm, the train was warm, the bus ride was warm. Um, and I do remember uh, a friend of mine from the Scouts, uh, Jan, took my backpack, uh, carried it for me to the camping. Uh, they dropped me somewhere in the woods to cool down. I had um, a cooling box full of drinks and I started first, of course, with my water. Uh, but yeah, the water was, uh, uh, was, was gone, so I started with my, my Coca-Cola and then no cokes anymore, so I started to drink uh, beer. Okay, luckily, I didn't have a lot of beers with me. Um, and even the army stopped and asked me, uh, how are you doing? And I said, yeah, not good. And uh, they picked me up with their big truck uh, to the Red Cross, uh, to the healthcare, uh, to take care of me. They put like uh, ice cold packs on me to cool down. And uh, yeah, it's one of my anecdotes. Or uh, another anecdote, uh, we were playing in the woods with some friends. Uh, and I started to struggle, uh, I fainted. Uh, my friend went home uh, to pick his, to ask his mom to take the car, uh, put the airco, uh, air conditioning uh, full power and I stayed in the car for uh, like 20, 30 minutes and I took a uh, really ice cold shower. Yeah, I have, a, sh I have a, a lot of stories like this. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you friends and family. So in my free time I struggle a lot, but as well as school. Once uh, the classroom was too hot, uh, I couldn't stay in class, so I had to go downstairs uh, to the secretary, uh, cool down there, drink water, uh, even sometimes go home. Um, but yeah, I never was a really good student, um, and I always have one passion, and that's cooking. So at some point, when I was uh, 14, 15, I started uh, chef school. I stayed there for three years. Uh, which I loved. Uh, I was really doing my best. Uh, I think I was not a, a, a bad student. Uh, the only thing was um, at the end of the day, uh, after uh, the lunch at school, after cooking, I was 
most of the time, depends in winter, not so much, but uh, once uh, spring, summer, um, I was feeling bad. And I had to go outside or even a fridge or whatever, uh, trying to cool down. Uh, my teachers said, you're never gonna be a chef. So actually they closed me or they, they said you cannot go further um, in chef school. So after that, I actually started as a butcher at this butchery school, which wasn't easy. So after school, I started to work in um, a nice Italian um, restaurant uh, in Strombeek, which I almost worked two years there. Uh, I struggled sometimes in the summer uh, for uh, the heat. But afterwards, I went to London for one year. I rejoined my best friend. Um, there, I worked for uh, L'Atelier de Joueurs de Bichon, which is a two-star Michelin restaurant. Uh, as well, I worked uh, in uh, the loft, which is from John Road, And uh, I also worked a little bit in the Muse of Mayfair, um, near Liverpool Street, uh, if I do remember well. Where actually I fainted one, one time. Um, I fainted uh, in the kitchen. Uh, I rest for half an hour and the chef asked me to retake my job and to work again. I do understand it's really frustrated for him, for him to work with one guy less, but you have to understand me. I was feeling very bad. My friend Yen picked me up at my work. Thank you for that. And so I came back from London and I started to work in the Lommekezhoeve in Grimbergen. Uh, which is a very nice brasserie, but I was struggling and struggling and struggling uh, with my illness. So at some point I said I'm gonna quit uh, chef, being chef, and I'm gonna start as a butcher. So yeah, why butcher? Because yeah, butcher is, you're most of the time not in the fridge, but more in a cold area. You have like an oven or a teppanyaki or whatever uh, next to you. So that's why I went back to butchery uh, because to be honest, I had a good palmares already on my CV of uh, being chef. So actually after 10 years, I met my teacher uh, from uh, the chef school where uh, they said, I'm never gonna be able be, to be a chef. And so I met her, I told her just what I said. I worked in Michelin star and this and that. And she was looking at me and it was funny because the whole class of uh, chef school was there uh, looking at her. And I was like giving actually a slap in her face. Because if you want to do something, and if you are passionate about it, you can do it. So the most important part actually. So what's happening with me when it's hot or I do too much sport? Well, easy, I heat up. So yeah, you heat up, it's a fatal condition. It's also unrecognized by doctors. I cannot have like a, a paper to say I cannot go to work when it's too warm. And some people doesn't take seriously. And that hurts a lot. I can reach temperatures of 38, 39 degrees. And how do you feel yourself when you're uh, when you have a fever? Not so good, but I have it a couple of times every day or during weeks, and it's not fun. My blood pressure drops down, so you feel overheated, and then you feel super dizzy of the blood pressure. I start to have cramps in my muscles or spasm. Um, which is really not fun or like needles all in my face or in my arms and legs it's like somebody punching punching you with some needles in the face and it's 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 really painful i also start hard to breathe it's like uh, somebody you did like a marathon or like a, some some sports you feel like <laughs> but i have it when doing nothing like for example today i stayed at home i have a little bit of fever maybe 37.5 uh, of doing nothing but yeah that's my life now as well because I have pain in my muscles I don't have strength anymore I'm feeling super super uh, sick and, and yeah, fatigue I don't have any strength anymore um, yeah it hurts everywhere which is really not nice and as well your skin is burning the whole time so it means this morning I woke up um, and my skin is already feeling super hot and that's really not a nice feeling. So I have a hard time to breathe now with uh, the mask we have to wear uh, at work and even in the buses in public transport, it's, it's really not pleasant. Sometimes there's not even uh, air conditioning in the metro or uh, bus. 
um, which is really not easy. Uh, it's sometimes passing through hell for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, just the time to go back home. Um, I hate to be in the sun when I'm warm or I hate to feel heat um, and I get very, very annoying and my wife can tell about it. I can be a pain in the ass, let's say it like that. So what do I do when it's too hot? Well, the trick is or else. I uh, wet my t-shirt, I do like a wet t-shirt contest um, or I put like a wet towel in my neck to to cool down or just put water on my face but there's a, a negative part of it if I do it too much my skin is getting completely red it hurts it burns even more and that's really not nice feeling you can cool down but yeah you have the, an, another kind of reaction so even all, as well I try to stay home or um, I, I try to be like in the park or forest where there's a lot of shadow, a lot of wind. Um, yeah, that's my saver. Shadow, wind, and air. <laughs> Too brief, and cold air, because sometimes we have hot air and it's really not, really not so very pleasant. I do have like um, a cooling vest for uh, motorcycles, but yeah, it cools down for me for 20 minutes, but my, my body temperature is so high, it, co it heat up very easily. So after 20 minutes, half an hour, I have to take it out again because I'm feeling too hot. So it helps me a little bit, but it's not completely helping me for the whole day. As well, I drink a lot of water. Water and as well sport drinks. And sometimes I, I like to drink a Coke just to have some sugar inside. Because that's also a negative part. Actually, when I drink water, I feel much better. It's like an ice cube falling down in your stomach. I feel much better when I drink water. But then, you know, water intoxication is still there. Your uh, kidneys cannot take uh, more than one liter of liquids an hour. And it means sometimes in uh, warm places or even sport or whatever, like for example, marathon um, runners have it as well water intoxication because they drink and I drink as well. Too much water on a short period. I can go for, for example, not so long time ago, I drink five liters and a half in, in a time of three hours and a half, four hours, but very fast. And then you start to feel very dizzy. Again, muscles, uh, cramps, uh, you have spasms, uh, dizziness. Um, I have to vomit sometimes. Um, I had it one afternoon in a, in a restaurant where I used to work. I drink over seven liters of water just in the beginning of the service, I, let's say in the afternoon at four till the end, and I was feeling really, really sick. Uh, and it's really not nice. It's a bit the same when you go to the pub, you drink too much beer in, in a short amount of time, you have to vomit. Well, uh, it's the same when you drink too much water. Um, it also takes all the sodium away. That's why you get dizziness. That's why sometimes you have to drink a sport drink uh, with some salt and sugar to keep uh, the blood pressure on a good uh, level. And as well, all the water needs to go out. I don't sweat it, so I can go over 25 times sometimes to the toilet uh, and not so nice to say, but uh, as well some diarrhea, it needs to go out. So I drink that much water or uh, sport drinks in, in a short amount of time. Uh, so you start sometimes feeling really bad around three or four o'clock in the afternoon. But yeah, I still have to struggle till the evening before I go to bed. And then when you go to bed, yeah, it's too warm in the, in the bedroom. That's also a, a, a struggle. Uh, so sometimes I, I don't feel, I, I, so I cannot sleep very well. Um, I cannot leave the window open because my wife is allergic for mosquitoes and she has like big, big um, uh, stinches on the, on the skin. Um, so <laughs> this is a bit like annoying. But yeah, so hard time to, to sleep. And as well, when it's warm, you're not so hungry as well. So it's actually a good diet if you want to lose some weight, but I'm already super skinny. Uh, so sometimes I try my best to eat something because you, you need to put uh, some sodium inside you and some energy so your uh, body can recover uh, more easily. So I made this video, it was maybe a bit long, but uh, so I'm trying to reach uh, some people who uh, has it. Um, it's not nice to live with it. It's, uh, it's a tough time. 
and I made also this video because uh, sometimes I have to explain my, my sickness for a couple of times a day or a week uh, so I can send them now to YouTube uh, to my channel uh, to see uh, how um, my sickness are, is going what they have to do and everything so that's why I also made a long YouTube uh, video I'm sorry for that guys so one more thing and I'm gonna say it again uh, thank you very much uh, already to watch it um, you always say, can comment it uh, down below um, I'm gonna thanks all my uh, family my mom my dad my sister um, which they were always there for me even also my, my, my close friends they know what I have to do and uh, I almost come and start to cry but um, I'm really happy they are there even my wife uh, she's uh, such an angel with me sometimes uh, it's not easy but yeah that's life so I would say maybe subscribe as well and uh, I wish you a happy summer and okay I'm not cooking but I'm still gonna say it. merci au revoir et bonsoir un frère tordu de Brussels au revoir